Hey everyone, Luke here with the Knee Replacement Therapist. In this episode of the Knee to Know Show, I'm gonna share with you some helpful tips and techniques to overcome some of the biggest hurdles that come with having bilateral knee replacement surgery. Before I jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, so you can catch all of our latest videos related to knee replacement surgery. So before I jump into the helpful tips, I do just wanna to quickly touch on some of the benefits, some of the um, pros and cons of having a bilateral knee replacement. If that's something that you're kind of already past that point, be sure to just use the timeline below and skip ahead. Um, I'll put it in the chapters where you can just skip ahead to the helpful tips. But before we jump into that, some of the benefits. So some of the benefits of a bilateral knee replacement is one, you're decreasing your risk of surgical exposure. So you're only having to undergo one surgery rather than two separate surgical operations. So this means decreased risk of complications, decreased risk of infection, and just overall decreased risk with just having one surgery compared to the two. Now you also have to think about you only have one recovery period. So you only have to go through the rehab and the recovery process one time rather than having the first knee done going through the rehab and recovery and the pain, then getting the second knee done, and then going through that rehab and recovery all over again. So that's a really good benefit too, is you only have to go through that recovery process once. Now, one of the cons is the recovery timeline is gonna possibly be a little bit longer with a bilateral knee replacement, just because obviously there's two knees, a little more healing, a little more recovery is required, and there's some other challenges of having two knees that just had surgery that are stiff, swollen, painful, and we'll get into those a little bit here. Um, so, a couple things you may consider may mean more time off work, um, increased impact on the body. Again, that might be difficult to manage. Um, so you just might have to consider that if you're someone with some other health concerns, if you may have other risk factors, um, having a bilateral knee replacement that's a little more intensive might be something that would not be appropriate for you. So definitely discuss um, with your surgeon um, what options there are for you out there. All right, so overall for bilateral knee replacement, one main thing is essentially you're following all the same recommendations for a single or a unilateral knee replacement surgery, um, except now it's for both sides. Um, so any video that you watch about total knee replacement, unilateral knee replacement on one side, essentially all of the recommendations, everything they're saying, the exercises to do, management strategies for pain and swelling, um, range of motion activities, strengthening activities, all of those are essentially gonna be all the same thing. So that's something to keep in mind, is just because a video or an article or any type of education that you receive is focused on a unilateral or a single knee replacement, really much of all that information will have the same um, benefit and meaning to you. Now, there, of course, there are a couple of unique things that we'll get into here. So my first tip is definitely take advantage of using an assistive device early on after surgery. And a lot of times this is a walker, um, sometimes it's crutches, but just really don't rush to getting rid of these assistive devices. And the reason being is with both knees having surgery, it's gonna be painful and difficult to really bear weight through your legs as you're walking and moving. So I'd rather you have that assistive device, that walker or the crutches that you can put a little bit more weight through and just get back into a more normal, um, natural walking pattern with good um, step length, good speed, good weight shifting, um, putting weight through both legs and moving both legs, swinging them effectively. I'd rather you practice that um, a little bit longer with the walker, with the crutches, than trying to jump into not using an assisted device or jump to using a cane and then it really will have an impact on what your walking pattern and your gait pattern looks like. You know, you're gonna have these short steps, you might have a limp. Um, it just won't look quite normal or what it should 
um, as you heal and recover. So that's the first thing. Definitely use the assistive device and use it a little bit longer if needed. That's perfectly okay. Something else is consider aquatic therapy or pool therapy. And this is for a similar reason. Again, putting that weight bearing through your painful, swollen, stiff knees on both sides is going to be kind of hard to manage for some folks. And the aquatic therapy, the pool therapy, has the great benefit of offloading that stress, offloading that weight that is going through your knee joints. So you're going to be able to tolerate a lot more um, walking in the pool, doing body weight exercises in the pool. You're going to tolerate better some of the range of motion activities, some of the strengthening activities. And it's just going to get you moving and feeling a little better. So I definitely am a big fan of aquatic or pool therapy especially for the bilateral knee replacement folks. The other thing, and this I think applies for the people who have a single knee replacement, but even more so now, and this is kind of makes sense, is you want to perform all the exercises on both sides. If it's range of motion, if it's strengthening, if it's a body weight exercise, if it's the recumbent bike, we want to focus on both sides. You may think that one side is progressing a little faster than the other, so you might emphasize that side. Um, the side that needs to catch up, you might emphasize that a little more with your exercises. But really, every time you do a set of exercises on one leg, do that same set of exercises on the other leg. Of course, this is going to take you a little bit longer to do this. Um, and, you know, that's, that's just the nature of it. Um, you're going to have a lot better outcomes in the long term, um, even though it may take you a little longer to get through your exercises. Another thing you can focus on is really transitioning to exercises that incorporate both sides of the body naturally. So, for example, sit-to-stands, for body weight squats, um, deadlifts that may be modified um, for your abilities with your physical therapist. Um, exercises that just in natural natural of how they are will emphasize strengthening or range of motion on both sides of the body. My next tip is you probably will still have a quote unquote better knee. And this is important mostly for any type of activity that you want to have one side of your body doing it. So the big one is going to be stairs. For stairs, people always say, go up with the good, down with the bad. And, you know, for someone who has a single knee replacement, obviously this is very easy. Which one's the good one, quote unquote, which one is the bad one? Um, for you, having a bilateral knee replacement, you're going to have to kind of determine. Um, you may, based on, you know, if you're right-handed, the vast majority of times you're right-footed right, right -footed or right-legged. Um, so maybe you'll start with the right leg as your good leg. Um, or maybe you just have way more pain in one side or way more or less range of motion on one side. So it's kind of a, a subjective, uh, decision, subjective excuse me, decision, decision um, in terms of, you know, what's your good side, what's your bad side. But that will help you kind of determine going up and down the stairs which way you want to proceed. Now, what's good to do, you know, especially in physical therapy or with someone nearby watching and guarding you, is to still do the stairs leading with both legs so that you can build up both legs and strength and safety and balance in both sides. Um, but another thing is sometimes getting up from the floor, um, kneeling if you're, you know, your surgeon didn't say anything that you couldn't kneel, um, things like that. Usually you want to have what you consider your good side or your strong side, or and then your not as good side. Um, so just keep that in mind. Another big thing is what's going to be even more important, again, for a bilateral knee replacement recipient is setting up your home environment for success. Again, it's going to be a struggle a little bit, especially early on, to get around. So things like, if you can, setting up um, just so that you can are living on one floor or you don't have to use stairs quite as much. So that might be making, you know, getting a bedroom or a sleeping arrangement that's on the first floor. That may be having the bedroom or shower on the first floor as a, a um, you know, instead of the second floor. 
Um, it's things like setting up your bathroom, making sure you have an elevated toilet seat to help you get up and down easier, or a, a commode that you can put over the toilet seat. It may be having a shower bench or a chair that can help you to sit down when you're in the shower and also help you with getting in and out of the shower. Um, another thing is just looking at the chairs throughout your home, making sure that they're, you know, your couch is up high enough that you can get in and off on and off the couch um, w relatively easily and independently, making sure you have enough space to get around, if, especially if you're going to be using a walker or an assistive device. You might need an extra little bit of space to get around the home. So all sorts of things like that. There's probably other things that I, I can't think of quite at the moment, but just making sure your home is set up in a way that's accessible and you can do the things that you need to do, anticipating that you're going to have probably a lot more pain, a lot more difficulty getting around early on after surgery. And then in that same same line, I would say consider having helpers. You know, if you have family that you live with, obviously that's great. Um, maybe you don't have family that's nearby or that you live with. Having a neighbor, having a close friend, doesn't have to be with you all the time, but maybe can stop in for 15, 30 minutes once a day Make sure you're set up for meals. Make sure, you know, if there's any errands or things in the home that have to be taken care of, they can help you with that. That can be really beneficial um, as you rehab and recover. And then the last thing I would say is just stay on top of your pain. Just like what I would recommend with the single knee replacement folks is we want to look at all the different ways to address your pain, keep your pain in a manageable level so that you can do your physical therapy, you can do your exercises, and you can just function in your day-to-day -day activities. So that's pain medicine, anti-inflammatories, icing, um, compression, um, exercises, some massage techniques maybe, all those different things. Keep your pain under control so that you can tolerate the activities and you can remain independent and functioning as you rehab and recover after surgery. I hope you found this video insightful and helpful. As always, please be sure to hit that like button to help spread this video to others. Please be sure again to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And always, as always, please leave your questions, your comments below, and I do my best to get back to everyone. Thank you for watching.